What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I want to give a shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Goliath Burrito, Forbidden Fan 12, Steven Stanton, Kent 9 Dave 69, Saturn Coon, Fish Cake, Nicholas A. Montgomery, Tat Cap, Johann Stenfeld, Anthony, Russell Kanai Uyker, Luis A. Sandoval, Samaran 1, Shane Lindroth, Firefox 2590, Crispy Bacon, D, Evo, Jasmine Tayer Studley, Scav King, Zombie, Stinging Shadow, Cursing Throne 92, Jacobus 92, Owen, The One Who Crawls, Cesar Valentin, Joshua Susick, Travis Tennant, Malik, JPC2, Jacob W, Alex Cole, Joshua Wire, Malik Black, Kiki, and as always, I want to give a shout out to our executive producers, Bevan Brummett and Vincenzo. Thank you all very much for your support. If you want to become a YouTube member, click the join button, which is down by the subscribe button down below. And if you wish to become a Patreon supporter, click the link in the description to find out more. We'll see you there. Oh, I got a new tool. Wait, is this a... Oh my gosh, dude, I can melt through metal now. Yay! Any upgrades available? Hello, hello. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I got a full minute of blowtorch. <laughs> Hello, good day, salutations to everyone out there on the interwebs and what other introduction words that exist. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Nate here from the Renegades. And, um, yeah, I am here in my room again, uh, doing some more solo reactions. Uh, the reason for this is because, uh, this week has been especially very weird because, um, there's been a couple things that have happened uh family wise with me uh number one my um my mother had a health problem uh so i had to go see to her and that was that was a i wasn't sure what that we weren't sure what the heck was wrong then we found out and now things are a lot better and then today or i mean not today uh yesterday as in yeah, it's Friday. Yeah, it is currently Saturday, June fifth. Uh, so yesterday, well, technically yesterday, because uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's two fifty in the morning. So I'm doing these very, very late at night or early in the morning, depending on how you look at it. But yeah, R slash Pro Revenge. This was recommended on our Discord. Um, I want to try and make more of a habit of going in there and reacting to a lot of the ones in bulk that are requested on our Discord and our Patreon as well. So, yeah, it's just a whole thing that I'm trying to, I, I want to do, but at the same time with everything that's going on, plus the fact that we are very, very, very close to closing out on production of the offer, which I am ecstatic for, and I'm hoping will be out later this month. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is a uh, this is something like I, I want to do this more often. You know, do solo reactions and uh, catch up on a lot of the different things that uh, people are requesting on our Discord. But for right now, I'm going to be doing r slash Pro Revenge Entitled Parent versus Pro Revenge Mastermind Miss. That's illegal. Let's go ahead and get this up on screen. Let's give it a watch. Here we go. Welcome to r slash pro revenge. Today we find out what happens when r slash entitled parents meets r slash pro revenge. So this happened earlier today and was too perfect to not share with you guys. I work in construction as the foreman for a new house build. The location is kind of strange. The house is 250 feet up on a hill via a footpath only. All of our materials have to come up this footpath by hand. It's a pain in the butt to manually carry quite literally an entire house up this hill. 
One of our saving graces is having the two parking spots on the street at the bottom of this hill marked with official no parking signs. Unfortunately, there's an elementary school about half a block away and the parents of children seem to regularly, at least twice a day, think it's okay to park in our spots. Now, I consider myself a reasonable person, so if someone is parked in the spots and we don't have a delivery or I need to park a truck, I will let it go. If I need the spots and there's no one parked there, however, I will ask them to move nicely and most of the time they will do so immediately. Until today. I get a call Here from a delivery truck that is en route to our location. He says he'll be there in about two or three minutes. I let him know I will meet him at the street and make sure he has a space to park. He's carrying all of the materials to frame the roof of our house, which is a lot of really big lumber and will take easily an hour to bring up the hill. So naturally, I didn't want him parked in the middle of the street with his hazards on for an hour when we have a perfectly good parking spot for him. As I begin my trip down the hill, I notice there's a school parent sitting in her car idling. Assuming she's just waiting to pick up her child, I walk up to her car and politely let her know that she is parked in a no parking zone and we really need her to clear it to park a delivery truck. She scoffs at me and rudely states back, I'll just be a few minutes and your truck isn't here. Take a chill pill, dude. Before I can respond, a giant lumber truck comes around the corner and I wave to him and then gesture towards him to the woman in the car who has now put her window back up to ignore me. I put on my best customer service smile and wave at her through the window. She put it down halfway and angrily shouts, what? By now the truck has pulled up alongside her car and I politely ask her again with a stronger tone of voice to move her vehicle, reminding her that she is illegally parked in a tow-away zone. Then yes. she gives me this wonderful idea. She says, can't you guys just unload around me? Jesus, it's not that hard. I give her another smile and walk away. A oh boy. brilliant plan forming in my head. Um. Uh... As someone who helped work construction for a long time, I helped my dad work construction on multiple houses, at least nearly a dozen houses, and um, thankfully we never had to run into anything like this. We never had any nosy uh, busybodies or anyone re uh, really do or say anything. We usually just had uh, workers who would show up uh, either high or drunk, and we would have to pretty much just tell them, you know, go home for the day. And if you do it again tomorrow, you're don't you're you're not going to have a job here anymore. That's really the only time I can remember anything like that happening. We mostly employed like uh really like close uh friends and family members, you know, people we trusted uh for these jobs because it was a family operated business. And um yeah, I we never had a, a we never had anything like this. It, I wonder what the hell they're gonna do. I instruct the delivery driver to park as closely to her as possible and block her in with the porta potty that is on one end of our reserve spot and the car that is parked just adjacent to our spots on the other end. He smiles because he immediately gets what I'm trying to do and proceeds <clears throat> to expertly block this lady and her car into a little two parking spot jail. We unstrap the lumber and my guys begin humping material up the hill. Meanwhile, I call the police parking enforcement to let them know the situation. At this point in time, I wasn't trying to get her in trouble. I just wanted a record of why we were blocking part of the street so we don't get in trouble with the city. The very friendly traffic officer lets me know that she can be there in about 30 minutes and deal with the situation for me. Wonderful. As we continue to unload lumber, the child of the parent shows up and wouldn't you know it, mom is just now realizing that the lumber truck is parked so close she can't get out of her driver door to meet her kid. She awkwardly clambers across the inside of her car and stumbles out the passenger door, shooting glaring looks at me and the truck driver in the process. She loads her kid into the back and then begins to realize that she has no way of leaving. She comes storming up to myself and the driver and states, I'm in a big hurry. You need to move your freaking truck right now so I can go. Before I can respond, the driver gets a grin on his face and says, Ma'am, in order to unload the lumber on the truck, we had to unstrap it. And per our company policy, I'm not allowed to move the truck with any unsecured load on it. <laughs> yes, it is genius. This sends her into near aneurysm levels of blood pressure. Meanwhile, I can barely contain my laughter. F your policy, I have somewhere to be, she barks back at him. 
At this point, with impeccably convenient timing, the parking enforcement officer shows up and parks behind the truck. She doesn't see the officer arrive, and while the officer is still getting out of her vehicle, I just casually say, can't you just pull around it? It's not that hard. With the biggest shit-eating grin I've ever had, I watch as she realizes that I just used her line on her. F you, she yells and storms back to her car and <laughs> angrily clambers back in through the passenger door and into the driver's seat. At this point, the officer is walking up to myself and the driver. Before she can even introduce herself, the mom in the car slams it into reverse and stomps on the gas, crashing into our porta potty and knocking it over, and then throws the car into drive and tries to mount the curb and drive on the sidewalk. The officer, driver, and I are staring in disbelief as she gets halfway over the curb and gets stuck. Oopsies. I can hear her screaming <laughs> obscenities over the idling truck from inside her car. The officer <laughs> promptly walks up to the door of the car and orders her out. My favorite part of the entire thing is watching her face go to shock as she realized she just did all of that in front of a police officer. She gets slapped in cuffs as the parking officer calls for a second unit and she is promptly sat on the very curb she tried to drive over. She sits on the curb yelling to the now two officers about how we told her she could stay there and that we never asked her to move. The traffic officer responds that she was the one who was originally called when she first refused to move and that she already knows what's going on. While myself and the driver are giving a report to the second okay. officer, my guys finish moving the remainder of the lumber and the driver finishes his statement and takes off to go back to the yard. By the end of the ordeal, she was arrested, charged with child endangerment. Yes. She was in the back of the car the whole time. Reckless mm -hmm. driving, destruction of property, the porta potty, yeah. and driving on a suspended license. Wow. I mean, it, oh, hey, Lulu. Hey, baby. Oh. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the cherry on top is the suspended license, but. Just the fact that destruction of property and it's the shitter. She, <laughs> when you get charged for destruction of property and it's literally the shitter, that's that's honestly just mwah, chef's kiss of just like it's like yeah you're being charged with destruction of property. What did I destroy? The porta potty. You're really gonna charge me over the shitter? Yep, that's right. On top of all that, she also got her car towed. The kid went home with his grandma and she went to spend some quality time in a cell. I never expected her to actually heed my advice to just pull around it. But I think next time she'll probably think twice about parking in a towaway zone if she ever gets a license again. Yeah, oh, that's it's the key. So beautiful. This is what happens when entitled parents meets pro revenge. While walking to my gate at LAX airport, I notice a woman whose dog was in the middle of doing its business. The woman was loudly FaceTiming with her back to the dog, so I assume she didn't notice. That was likely the thought shared by the gentleman who tried to get her attention. Excuse me, miss, he said in a polite tone. The woman glared at him. Your dog, he sheepishly continued, pointing to the mid-poop pup. The woman rolled her eyes and went back to FaceTime as the man slinked away, seemingly embarrassed. Some people, she bellowed to her FaceTime companion with no hint of irony, are just so darn rude. When her dog finished, the woman started walking. This story sounds eerily familiar. Hmm. Sounds like that Steve Hofstetter story. I wonder if this is a secondhand telling, uh, retelling of it, or if this person actually did witness it. I don't know, but, uh... Yeah, it's probably them retelling the story from a point of view that uh, they're copying Steve Hofstadter's. We'll see. Away, leaving everything right on the airport floor. Another woman tried to stop her. You're not going to clean that up? She asked, as shocked as the rest of us were. They have people for that, the offender replied. That's the exact same line. As much as someone yelling into their phone can disappear into a crowd. I stood near the pile and warned people to walk around it while someone else got a maintenance worker's attention. No one said anything. We were so shocked that anyone could be that horrible. When I got to my gate, the woman was there too. Great. This is literally Steve Hofstadter's story retold for this r slash pro revenge. Unless this is Steve Hofstadter uh, typing this on r slash pro revenge. 
Yeah, it's... No. We were both going to Tokyo. When I travel abroad, I get embarrassed by other Americans doing things 100 times less embarrassing than leaving animal feces on the floor of the airport. To make it worse, her dog was now barking at everyone who walked by. I have nothing against people flying with their dogs. I do it often, but it is a privilege I take seriously. My dog is well trained and behaves. Hey, Lulu. <laughs> She wants me to come over and pet her. She'll probably come up and start uh, scratch, uh, like scratching my leg. He's better than most people. He certainly behaves better than that butthole. Speaking of buttholes, there is a pet relief area inside LAX, past security, just two gates away from where the party pooper let her dog go to town. It didn't matter. She was the type of person to litter three feet away from an empty garbage can. While her dog barked at the world, the woman had moved from FaceTiming with no headphones to listening to music with no headphones. I don't like to throw around the word sociopath, but I don't know how else I could explain just how selfish and terrible of a person she was. I'd bet her car was somewhere in long-term parking, parked across three spots with paint on the bumper from the child's bike she hit without leaving a note. It's verbatim! That's... Verbatim, that is one-to-one. -one. This is one-to-one -one Steve Hofstadter's story. Sitting as far away from her as they could, I am not everyone else. I sat down right next to the horrible woman. Are you going to London on business? I said. I'm going to Tokyo, she responded gruffly, annoyed that I had interrupted her DJing. Oh, I said. Then you better hurry. The flight got moved to gate 53C. This is the flight to London. I figured I could give her a little moment of panic as payback for how terribly she was treating everyone. I didn't predict what would happen next. She grabbed her bags and her dog in a huff and stormed out of the gate without even checking. She was so self-involved, she didn't notice that the monitor at our gate still said Tokyo and almost everyone at the gate was Japanese. Based on her actions, she believed me that the flight had been moved, so she's also a butthole for not thanking me. Some people, I thought, as I watched her rush away from the gate without stopping her, are just so darn rude. The flight to Tokyo was at gate 69A, so the 53 gates were on the other side of the next terminal. And I felt guilty knowing she probably berated some poor clerk who had to explain to her that there was no <laughs> 53C. Yeah. I don't know if she made it back to this flight before we took off or not, but I didn't see her board and I don't hear her dog. Her missing her flight was not my original intention, but it would be a fine punishment for her being so rude to everyone and making a low paid stranger clean feces off the floor. What makes me wonder if I went too far is the knowledge that Delta only has one flight to Tokyo each day. Whoops! Maybe she can rebook on another airline. I hear they have people for that. I would spend actual money. I would spend those big ol' YouTuber bucks to watch that airport security footage of this woman when she gets to the wrong gate and realizes she missed that flight. Oh my god! I would, I would pay anything to watch that footage. We live in a small private- Yeah, that story was Steve Hofstadter. I- Unless that was Steve actually writing that story, I don't, yeah, I don't think that person, that actually happened to that person. The neighborhood. The neighbors are related to us, more or less, distant relatives. Everybody here is a complete nut job. They were constantly arguing over decades before me or my brother were even born. Our property line is kind of like a square, and it is surrounded by road from two sides. Keep in mind that on one part of the road, we let our neighbors use one square meter of the land so they could use the road safer and not damage our property. This is crucial information. This road is made of gravel. The neighbors want my parents and only my parents to pay for the entire cost to lay an asphalt road. My dad and my mother are constantly fixing potholes for 90% of the road. So naturally, our neighbors thought that they will pay for the asphalt road. Classic choosing beggars. Fast forward 20 years, the road remains gravel-ish. Nobody wanted to pay for the asphalt road. One day, my neighbors order a massive truck filled with tons of wood. The truck driver runs over our fence. Nobody wanted to pay for the damage. Our fence is made out of multiple bushes, trees, and a little bit of metal fence too. These plants were now completely destroyed and a part of the metal fence completely bent. We had to replant these plants and place a new metal fence. My father told me this was not the first time this happened, but actually the third. I couldn't believe it when I heard this. So this is where the revenge begins. My father is a police okay. officer in the department where they mostly handle frauds, drug busts, <laughs> etc. He knows the law well. 
He dug up the property line marker and placed plastic barrels filled with rocks on our property. In the next six hours, three of our neighbors came knocking on the door because they had our plastic barrels filled with rocks. They were angry and wanted to call the cops, but they never did because everyone knew that little part of land was still our property. One neighbor in particular threatened my dad that he will throw a freaking pickaxe at my father's back. Over the period of one year, these neighbors hit the barrels so much with their cars that the barrels are now worthless. My dad was furious and he changed his petty revenge into pro revenge. He cut some wood to use it as a mold. He bought cement, sand, and metal poles. One peaceful afternoon, my father and I cemented that whole part of the land oh. and placed some lovely flowers on top. So Ouch. when they hit the concrete, they can smell our flowers of victory and defeat. As we expected, Five neighbors in total wrecked their cars on the new fence and nobody came knocking on the door. And as an added bonus, we have a picture of the revenge wall, but I feel like it's missing something. Ah, there we go. It's amazing what just a touch of paint would do. That's what I would put on my new fence. What would you write on your new car destroying concrete fence? Let me know down. I would, I would write G-E-T f c k d that's that's what i would wrote that's what i have wrote on the wall instead of r slash pro revenge it have been get fucked down in the comments i would love to hear your suggestions and if you like that i got another one for you when i was little our next door neighbors were the biggest buttholes they constantly sounds familiar us, insulted us through garbage on our house etc one thing they used to do was knock over these wooden poles we had in our grass, the part that separates our houses, with the bumper of their SUV and drive through our grass to get to their driveway. And when my dad would confront them, they would always tell us off and say, sue me. This happened a lot, and my dad waited till they were gone on vacation and dug all the poles out, then made the holes really big and proceeded to fill them all with big bags of concrete. Then he put new, longer poles in the grass back and waited. Well, when they got back, it wasn't but a few days later, we hear a bang and go outside <laughs> and see the back of their SUV all jacked up. Our neighbor proceeds to lose his cool, saying my dad had to pay for the damage, and my dad just smiled and said, sue me, and walked back inside. That was our <laughs> slash pro revenge. I just to... <laughs> oh, gosh. We had some butthole na well, some, okay, some a-hole neighbors back in the holler. We had some neighbors that went hunting throughout all night, and we would hear their gunshots. And here's the thing. That's illegal. And they would ba basically just go out, would spotlight hunt, and they would kill deer, and then they would try and hawk the deer off and sell it to people uh, just, you know, just as like a hustle. And Jesus, God. Uh, I remember one time they actually dumped a whole bunch of guts uh, on the side road that's near our house and it was just unsightly just ma imagine just seeing uh, what's left of a deer carcass uh, left there strewn about on the side of the road after someone had Lulu what are you doing see I turn around I hear rustling and everything I turn back around and <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing, girl? This is for Chad. This is for him. There we go. She'll probably still go over there and yeah, watch her. She'll she'll crawl over and <laughs> no, there she goes. So yeah, uh, never got any like pro revenge on those guys, but I do know that one of them did go to jail for. Uh, uh, for assault. That was that was interesting. Also, he had a lot of family members back there, and a lot of those family members did not like those people. They were not very nice. They were not very nice people. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Pro slash, uh, r slash pro revenge. So, r slash videos, you know, I've seen several of these in the past that are just downright hilarious. And, I'm, and I, I like these. I like looking at these although i will say this that second story was definitely just a steve hofstadter uh revenge story uh that he told and i'm not sure if that's a retelling or if steve hofstadter retold it 
I don't know. Not my place to judge. But, again, we'll have to see. Uh, I'll have to look into that. I'll have to look into who wrote that original post. So, anyway, I think that's going to do it, everyone. This was r slash pro revenge uh, entitled parent versus pro revenge mastermind miss that's illegal so i guess until next time signing off i'm nate i'll see you then peace out